In this video, we're going to be considering the following example. We have the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over the quantity 2n plus 1 cubed, um, and we want to determine whether this series converges or diverges. Um, so we know this is within our integral test section, but we want to think a little bit about strategy here and why maybe some of the other tests that we've learned so far would not work. So what do we know so far? Well, we know about the geometric series test. We know a little bit about telescoping series, okay, which use the uh, definition of convergence of a series to help you find Sn. Um, we also know about the divergence test. Okay, so let's just think about each of these so far here and, and maybe why they, they don't work out for us. Well, this is not a geometric type series. A geometric series is always going to have some number raised to the n in our sum. And here I have some n powers raised to a number, so it's definitely not a geometric type of series. It's not a telescoping series because I don't have a sum of a difference of um, two terms here, and I'm not going to be able to write that as a sum of a difference. So it's not telescoping. If we tried to apply the divergence test here, if I wanted to just try that test, I'd look at the limit as n goes to infinity of my terms, so of 1 over 2n plus 1 cubed, but I see that that equals 0, so that tells us nothing. So that tells us nothing. Okay, so we need another test. Okay, so can't use the divergence test. Can't do any of these other ones. So we're going to try the new test that we've just learned about. We're going to try the integral test. Okay. Now before I can apply the integral test, I need to um, check the conditions. Okay. Well, the very first step before we even go about checking the conditions is to define the associated function that we're going to work with. So make sure as soon as you've decided to use the integral test, you're going to write down the associated function. So here, since um, our terms are 1 over 2n plus 1 cubed, f of x will be 1 over 2x plus 1 cubed. Okay, so now we're going to go through and check the conditions. Okay, so remember that these conditions are to show that f of x is continuous, okay, for all values starting with our um, beginning index value. So f of x is continuous for x greater than or equal to 1, positive for x greater than or equal to 1, and decreasing for x greater than or equal to 1. Okay. Now, the conditions of continuity and being positive, there's not a lot of work for us to do for, with those. Um, oftentimes, it's fairly clear that we either meet or don't meet that, those conditions, but we just have to state those conditions. So we can say um, here, looking at our um, function here, 1 over 2x plus 1 cubed. Well, if x is greater than or equal to 1, 2x plus 1 is definitely positive. We cube it, it stays positive. So we can just state f of x is in fact positive for x greater than or equal to 1. Okay, that is a true statement. What about continuity? Well, the only value that I'd have to worry about, the only value that's not in this domain, um, would be a place where this denominator would be zero, so that would be at negative a half. Well, I'm interested in values here for x greater than or equal to 1, so we can say f of x is in fact continuous for x greater than or equal to 1, okay? It's only not continuous at x equals negative a half. Okay, so that's not even in the range that we're interested in. So what about showing that this function is decreasing? Okay, 
So we have those first two. So for f of x is decreasing for x greater than or equal to 1. I'm going to put a little question mark first. Okay. The way we're going to show that our function is decreasing is to find the derivative. Okay. Remember from Calc 1, if the derivative of our function is negative on some interval, then the function is decreasing on that interval. Okay. So we need to find f prime of x. Okay. We'll notice that our f of x here can be written as 2x plus 1 to the negative 3, since it's 1 over 2x plus 1 cubed. So f prime of x equals negative 3 times 2x plus 1 to the negative 4 times 2, using the chain rule. So I have negative 6 over 2x plus 1 to the 4th. Okay. So when we're doing this part of showing that our function is decreasing, um, we want to um, use a, our sign chart here to, to find critical values and look at intervals of increase and decrease and make sure that there's no critical points um, after 1 um, where it, it might change sign. Okay, We want to make sure that the sign of the derivative is negative for all values um, bigger than 1. Okay, So notice that f prime of x here equals zero nowhere, but f prime of x is uh, does not exist at negative a half. Okay, so I just need to put negative a half as a place where the sign could potentially um, change here. Although we can see with this particular um, derivative that I end up ended up with, this denominator will always be positive, and this numerator here will always be negative. So I see that my derivative is always negative. Okay, so we can say, so f prime of x is definitely less than 0, let's say, for all x bigger than negative 1 half. So certainly f prime of x is less than 0 on the interval that we're interested in, which is for x greater than or equal to 1. Okay, meaning f is decreasing for x greater than or equal to 1, which is exactly what we wanted to show. Okay, so what are the key pieces of work here? Well, we had to find the derivative, okay? We had to state that the derivative was, in fact, um, less than zero on the interval we were interested in, and then we had to conclude that meant that our function is decreasing on our, on our interval. Okay, and I needed to have some supporting work for this um, in general. Here, it's fairly clear that this, this is going to be uh, negative for values of x greater than or equal to 1, since that denominator is always positive, but sometimes you might need a little bit more work for that step. Okay, But now that we have these three conditions being met, okay, we can go to the main part of the test, which involves taking an improper integral. Okay, So now, look at the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over 2x plus 1 cubed dx. Okay, we need to determine if that integral converges or diverges. Okay, so notice that the integral test relies on doing improper integrals that we first learned about in 7.8. So I'm, I'm going to have to take this um, integral and rewrite it as a limit in order to evaluate it. So this is equal to the limit as b goes to infinity of the integral from 1 to b of 1 over 2x plus 1 cubed dx. Okay, I can go ahead and do a u substitution on this. So u equals 2x plus 1. du is 2 dx, or 1 half du equals dx. And then I'll change my limits to match my new u values here. So when um, x is equal to 1, I'll have u is 3. When x is b, I'll have u is 2b plus 1. Okay, so just reminding ourselves we do need the u limits here. Then I have u to the negative 3, and my dx is 1 half du. Okay, so what are we going to get next here? Well, I have the limit as b goes to infinity of 1 half. This u to the negative 3 is u to the negative 2 over negative 2, evaluated from 3 to 2b plus 1. So we have our limit as b goes to infinity. I can take out this uh, 1 over negative 2 here, so I have negative 1 fourth. 1 over 2b plus 1 squared 
minus 1 over 3 squared or 1 over 9. Okay. So notice that as b goes to infinity, this 1 over 2b plus 1 squared is going to 0. So I'm going to have negative 1 fourth times negative 1 ninth. So I get positive 1 over 36. Okay. So now I have to draw my conclusion. So my conclusion, I have to say something about what this value of my integral um, means in terms of the convergence or divergence of that improper integral, and then what that means about our um, original series. So I can say since the improper integral converges, so I need to note that this 1 over 36 means that that integral converges. This series that I'm being asked about, the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over 2n plus 1 um, cubed here, converges. And this is by the integral test. Okay, so all of the steps that we had in this problem are going to be required anytime you're doing an integral test problem. Defining the function, checking the three conditions that that function is positive, continuous, and decreasing, evaluating the improper integral, and then concluding that either the improper integral, your work that you had, either means the improper integral converges or diverges, and then what that means about the series and the name of the test that you're using. So watch the next um, video to see another example of applying the integral test.